Okay, so now let's compare this with uh, the analytical solution. So do we still remember what's the rate of decay for the analytical solution if you, uh, if you choose a, a function like this? Well, uh, we can easily do that, do that again, right? So, so basically the second order, uh, let, let's say, uh, we remember that uh, the Wxt is going to be a function at times sine of 2 pi kx and we can write this as a subscript k okay and uh, if i take derivative second derivative to x we get a minus 2 pi k square out of this that means uh, uh, my kappa is equal to zero and uh, this is equal to the derivative of w to t which is actually equal to d a k d t times the same sine 2 pi kx. If I match the terms, I find out my dak dt is equal to, uh, sorry, the minus is actually outside, uh, minus uh, 2 pi k squared times ak, right? The minus is outside because the first time I take the derivative, there is no minus. The second time I'm taking derivative to cosine, then I get a minus, right? So, okay, so that means ak is proportional to e to the minus 2 pi k square, a uh, square outside <coughs> t. All right, so so that means I expect the solution to have decayed by a factor of e to the minus 2 pi 0 0.05 squared. So w analytical is equal to w zero times exponential of minus 2 pi. 0.05, which is the length of the time I solved it, squared. Uh, sorry, 2 pi, 2 pi k, k is, is inside it, and the time is should be outside, times 0.05, right? So 2 pi k is going to be squared. Time is outside. It's not supposed to be squared, right? Okay, so that's, a, that's my W analytical. Let's hold on and the plot X and W analytical. Plot it as red and see how am I doing. So here I am, right? So the blue one and the red one looks pretty similar. There is a certain difference. And uh, if I let you to see the amount of difference I have, uh, the difference is about 0.42 minus 0.32. It's about 0.01, right? So kind of a, uh, that's how much error I get. Okay, so that's how much error I get for k equal to 1. So let's try the same thing for a different w0. w0, uh, let's see, 2 is, let's set k equal to 2 in that case. So I will use uh, this, but uh, I'm just going to say times 2. Okay, that's just a different w. So. Uh, if I make a new figure, if I plot x versus w02, shouldn't, uh, yeah, I get a, a different sine curve. As you can see, my, my, my representation of the sine function is actually much worse over here. Right? It doesn't really look like a sine function at all anymore. And let's uh, just uh, solve, use the same scheme to solve it and uh, see what we get. So I'll put a 2 everywhere, right? I'm going to use the same thing. So now on my new figure, I'm going to plot my W2. So uh, that's my W2, right? Okay. And then uh, my analytical solution, W2 analytical, is going to be W02 times exponential of uh, minus 2 pi 2 square times 0 0.05, which is uh, a time, right? And uh, I'm going to hold on and the plot X and the W2 analytical over here. So that's what I got. Uh, how much error do I have over here? 
Uh, it looks much bigger, right? Because for this uh, more oscillatory function, on one hand, it makes sense that I, uh, I seems to get a, a larger error, but then if you zoom in, how much difference is there? It's actually less than 10 to the minus 3, right? Compared to the about 10 to the minus 2 error I have over here. So the error here is actually much smaller than the error here. Why is it the case? Why do I have a bigger error in the Taylor series analysis? Basically, my truncation error for approximating second order derivative is larger, but it seems to have a smaller solution error. Yes? Difference in curvature Yeah, if you increase the frequency, you have a higher, higher curvature, but why would that lead to a smaller error? Yes? Can you say it again? Should we be looking at the relative error instead? That's a one good, very good point, is that uh, if you look at the relative error, right, uh, it's actually a lot more in the more oscillatory solution, right? That's a one good way to describe it. But the relative error is actually not the, uh, the, the entire thing, right? So for example, it's actually pretty common to have uh, a, a partial differential equation with another algebraic term. So if I have the, a diffusion term added with something else, well, then that something else is going to give you a large solution added on top of the 10 to the minus 3, right? You're going to see a very tiny relative error. You agree? Right? So I see some hands raised over here. So That's, that's similar to the answer uh, I had over here, right? But the, that's, uh, uh, that's actually not the entire uh, thing because I can easily change. Uh, so for example, if I, instead of solving this particular OD, uh, this PDE, uh, where is my, so instead of solving this, uh, let's for example add a term that is, uh, let's see. Um, so w d d w d t. How about if I add a term that is a uh, uh, just a sine of two pi k, right? I, I add a term that uh, causes uh, uh, linear growth, 